Hi, my name is Stanislav Morozov and welcome to another exciting tutorial. In this tutorial I'll show you how to easily transfer uh, your model from 3ds Max into Blender to render in Eevee. So let's imagine the situation that you have a project where you have visualized some uh, piece of tech for your client and everything looks great, you have a depth of field, you have uh, blurry reflections uh, but the client says, OK, that looks great, but now we need to make an animation out of it. And uh, at that stage, because of the depth of field, because of the blurry reflections, uh, it will take you at least maybe four or five minutes per frame uh, to render. And uh, you can uh, get a render farm and uh, pay some money to do it, or you can uh, simplify the scene, uh, remove the depth of field, uh, remove uh, blurry reflections or you can uh, bring it into Blender Eevee and render it out at the speed of about maybe 4 or 5 seconds uh, per frame. So that's uh, what I'm going to teach you today. Uh, so this is the render we are going to be replicating in uh, Blender. Uh, this uh, frame took me around uh, 5 minutes uh, to render. So let's see how long it will take uh, to render it in Blender. So first of all, we go back to 3D Studio Max and we select everything and we go File, Export, Export Selected and we export uh, uh, everything and we export everything as an FBX file. So save. Geometry, yep, cameras, click OK. Uh, we have some arrows that unsupported light light type and unsupported materials from uh, the Corona to FBX. So we just click OK. We start up uh, the blender. We click import. We click uh, FBX. We select our exported file. And let's see, because uh, the scales are a little bit different in uh, 3ds Max and uh, Blender, I'll set the scale to 5. And I'll click Import FBX. Uh, that's it. That's how our import looks like. So let's go into Preview mode. And we could see that uh, we did get the colors but we didn't get the textures. So we select uh, an object with uh, the green texture and we go into materials and we could see base color. We click here and click image texture. Now we click open and we select uh, our texture and click open image. Now, if you look back at the reference, we could see that we have a metal material here. So that's what we'll try to replicate here. So we select an object with this material. Let's name it metal. Our base color would do fine. We click metallic. And we reduce the roughness. And maybe actually base color will do a little bit lighter. Like this. Yeah, something like that. Uh, now we need to add the lights because uh, Corona lights are not compatible with FBX. We could see that we just have uh, null objects at uh, the place where the lights were here. So we basically just clicked uh, click Shift A and uh, create light, area light. Let's just take it, move it up, rotate it. Click here to set minus 90 degrees, like this, and we could click into Render Preview. Now we click Shift D to duplicate, and we just move it to the opposite side, and minus 180 degrees. Something like that. Now, in the render settings, we need to enable ambient occlusion. And let's play a bit with ambient occlusion. Let's see distance. 
also like that. And let's go into light settings and switch on contact shadows. Like that. Now let's go into screen space uh, reflections and uh, check off half res size uh, trace. Now let's go into shadows, click hybrid depths. And now another thing we need to do in Eevee is to uh, input an environment HDRI map that would help us to light the scene. So we go into environment, we go into color, environment texture, we click open. And I'll use an HDR image I uh, downloaded for free from HDRI Haven and I click open image. So HDRI loaded. Now we'll play a little bit uh, with metal texture. So we'll increase metallic like that. Now with uh, green texture uh, we reduce the roughness to make it a little bit more shiny. Now uh, we could use a normal map texture so we just use uh, where is it? Image texture. Ah, normal. Nah. I'm mistaken, so I'll just go in here and I can click uh, image texture map 9, click shift D to duplicate it. Let's see here. And uh, okay, now I duplicated it. So I'll just click Shift A, type in normal, normal map, and I'll connect color with color, normal with normal. And now let's go find normal map. Here it goes. Okay, so on the second thought, I'll probably I think I'll remove the normal map, but uh, instead of it I'll use uh, another texture as a bump map and I'll click Shift A, bump, I'll just connect color to height, normal to normal, and just uh, reduce the strength to maybe 0.1 or even less maybe Something like that. Okay, maybe even too much, so we'll go and reduce it to something like that. And now another thing is uh, in 3ds Max you can render out without camera. In uh, Blender you unfortunately can't do it, so we'll use the camera that was brought from 3D Studio Max, we select it and then if we click here we go view and we go camera and click camera to view so now basically you can rotate it and let's see and here we can rotate it a little bit like that Maybe even, oh, maybe even move it a little bit. Okay, so let's see the reference. Yep. Now we click to the camera, check depth of field. Now increase f-stop, and let's play a little bit with focus distance. like that, maybe reduce a little bit f-stop, let's compare with the reference, so maybe it would be nice to add uh, another color, uh, another light, so we just go back and first of all increase the strength of 
maybe not another thing is maybe shift d And maybe even increase a little bit of power like that. Let's compare. So now we need to make this metal a little bit uh, darker. Maybe uh, reduce some area lights a little bit. Power like this. Like that. Maybe like that, maybe reduce even some environment strength. Like this. Hmm. And maybe correct material a little bit here so maybe increase decrease the roughness decrease the specularity increase the metallic let's see if you want. like this and let's try another zero image uh, these are the studio HDRIs uh, that were bought on uh, Grayscale uh, Gorilla a couple of years back. So let's use maybe one of those. Let's wait while it loads. Here we go. And let, now let's increase the strength. Uh, maybe even... Click the shading. And uh, click. Let's see where is object world. And there is a beautiful add-on which is installed in Blender called Node Wrangler. When you click the shading, you click Ctrl T. It adds coordinates. So what it does is you can rotate in the GRI map. To install, the, uh, to install the node Wrangler you need to go into preferences, add-ons and just type in node Wrangler and just uh, check the checkbox. Now we can click uh, render image. And here you go. It took us about uh, two point well, let's say three seconds. So let's compare this this one. Let's actually do something like this. Yeah, it does look a little bit different, but not a problem. Maybe we can uh, play a little bit with the lights. Maybe we can move it up. Something like that. And maybe even, let's see, area 2. You can make it maybe, let's see, 15. Uh, make it 20. Let's make it 15. Well, let's make it 10. Okay, 10 and uh, strength. Maybe even play a little bit with metal materials, specularity, roughness, like this. 
maybe even with the depth of field a little bit. Let's see. Well, still not bad for 3 seconds of render time. Let's render it again. Let's uh, The settings you can change here, so it's 1920 by 1080. And uh, if you'd like to render out an animation, it's all set here. So you can click Render, uh, Render Image. And let's see, it took us uh, 2 seconds. So let's improve uh, the metal a little bit, make it a little bit more rough, reduce the specularity, darken the material. Well, almost. What? Uh, we also can do is we can go into compositing and click use nodes and uh, here is our image and we can click shift A and in distort lens distortion so we can click like that and click C.1 by 0 0.1 and now we can try to render image and we can see that it's too much, so we'll move it a little bit here. And so now let's see. So well, something like that would do. So, we can also go into layout, go on to render settings, go into color management, and let's change the look to maybe a very high contrast or maybe a medium high contrast. And we also could use curves. Do it a little bit, let's see. Maybe sounds like that. Maybe sounds like that. So if we compare uh, with our image from 3D Studio Max, maybe Still, the material is too shiny, so let's go and increase roughness, decrease uh, specular. Let's see. Also, maybe a little bit of tweaking with the camera, so go into camera and a little bit of rotation, maybe like that. Let's see. Uh, maybe too much. Well, not exact, but still uh, very close. So let's click render again. And now we have image with chromatic aberration, with depth of field, with blurry reflections for under two seconds of uh, render time. Which is uh, pretty nice comparing to a uh, five minute render in uh, 3D Studio Max, Corona render. So that's it for today. In the next uh, lesson I'll teach you how to set up a quick animation uh, for this scene. Hope you liked the tutorial. My name is Stanislav Morozov. Uh, subscribe, click uh, like, and I'll see you soon.